Finally, the day political ads are blocked is here. Facebook is making a striking compromise by banning all political ads one week before the U.S. presidential election. Mark Zuckerberg is making changes such as removing all posts that contain clear misinformation about COVID and voting. Plus, political ads can impact people's true voting desires. And we've got Ben, our guest here. He is a neuroscientist and he is here to give us some information and his opinions on our top trending stories. Hello, happy to be here. <laughs> Excited to get involved with this. All right, so Ben, what do you think about this whole Facebook thing with them banning the ads a week before the election? I think the most obvious question about all this is like, why one week before? You know, you would think that if they're going to do this, it would be kind of like from now on. But the other thing that really kind of hurts me a little bit is like the fact that there's such a problem with misinformation and political ads in the first place that you know a media corporation has to step in and, and prevent them from being you know shown to the public it's just a little bit uh concerning in general but i don't know i think it'd be nice if they if, instead of just banning all political ads if maybe they just screen the political ads for misinformation before showing them if you haven't seen Raised by Wolves, it's time to tune in. It's so good that it could be the next best original sci-fi show of the year. The film directed by Ridley Scott, who also directed Blade Runner and Aliens, created a story about humans being forced to establish colonies beyond Earth, resulting in battles between believers and atheists, which sounds pretty dope. The series is now available on HBO Max. Man, we need to get HBO Max. That's where everything's at. Have you seen Have you seen the original one, Raised by Wolves? Uh, I haven't seen the original. I mean, it sounds really interesting. I'm, I'm kind of a big uh, fan of sci-fi in general, but um, I'm just kind of curious about the leap between, like, they have to colonize a new place outside of the Earth, and then all of a sudden the atheists and the uh, religious people are, war, are at war with each other. Like, I'm kind of curious how those two things are connected, but it sounds really interesting. And if it's by HBO, it'll be good. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like, we're going to space, but now we're bringing in religion. <laughs> I love it. I've got to watch it. I want to know how much is HBO Max? What happens in a black hole stays in a black hole. But astronomers are saying they found the most epic black hole collision in history, similar to a chaotic merger that occurred some seven billion years ago. The two came rapidly spinning towards each other, crashing into a violent burst of energy in the universe, creating a massive black hole 142 times the mass of our sun. Do you have any theories on black holes or have you researched black holes? Um, I read Stephen Hawking's book about black holes um, and what I gathered is that they're absolutely horrifying. Basically anything nearby them gets sucked in and in his words, it gets turned to spaghetti. So, I mean, I don't know. I think that anytime I hear about stuff like astronomy in general is so cool, but every time I hear about it, it's so scary. All the women who are independent, throw your hands up at me. Today is V-Day. Beyonce turns 39 today, but she still looks like she's in her 20s. Queen Bee was nine when she started singing in Houston, Texas. She got her big break in Destiny's Child, which you might have heard of. Are you part of the Beehive, Ben? No. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider myself a member of the Beehive because I'm not really that big of a fan of hers. I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not, not a fan. I just don't really listen to her music. Okay. It seems like these stories are more frequent than ever. Daniel Prude, a 41-year-old black man from Rochester, New York, had an altercation with the police. During the altercation, police covered his head with a spit hood and pressed his face into the ground while he was handcuffed and naked. Seven days later, he passed away, and the medical examiner ruled his death a homicide, attributing it to complication of asphyxia in the setting of physical restraint, as well as excited delirium and PCP intoxication. His family said the police were notified due to Prude having an acute manic psychotic episode. The seven officers involved in his death have been suspended. Do you think the police engaging with him the way that they did from what you understood was the right thing to do? So I actually, I'm in neuroscience now, but I come from a psychology background and I used to study, um, I mean, I do study psychiatric illness from a neuroscience perspective, but I used to study um, things like suicide prevention. So, you know, I'm very in touch with this kind of, the sensitivity with this and I, and I I definitely think that, of course, anyone being called to handle this type of situation should be prepared and appropriately trained to work with people who, are, who have psychiatric illnesses. And I, I, as far as I know, I think police officers are, you know, they, they go through training um, on things like racial profiling, things like that. But I don't think there's any, you know, advanced, really hands-on training with how to handle 
a, you know, a subject, I guess, who may have a psychiatric illness. And I think that's extremely important to prevent this type of incident. So Labor Day is just around the corner, but why do we have a Labor Day? It is a day dedicated to the economic and social achievements of American workers who have contributed to the strength, prosperity, and well-being of our country. Ben, I see you're in the car. I'm assuming you have Labor Day plans. Yeah, I'm heading up to Connecticut. Um, did anybody worry about the travel restrictions? I'm going from New York State to Connecticut, where are both low coronavirus states, so social distancing. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a little, little road tripping. So thanks for tuning in to today's daily news show. Thank you again to Ben for joining us and taking time out of his road trip. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Is there anything that you're currently working on or any way that we can actually follow you to see if we can get some cool neuroscience tips from you? Yeah, definitely. So my Instagram is the eat dot brain, brain with an E, my last name. Um, so it's T-H-E dot B-R-E-I-N. Uh, and I post lots of, you know, educational videos on there and stuff. But I'm also, if you're a student interested in science, I have a coalition to help students. Um, it's the Aspiring Scientist Coalition. So you can go to AskASCScience.com if you want to join. It's totally free and there's lots of uh, great networking and educational events. Awesome. Well, my name is Sherry. Woo! Bye. Happy Labor Day. My name is Kelsey Cosmala. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Bye Ben.